Okay, what we're having a look at today is Lomori. So the Ubuntu Unity Remix guys have just tweeted out a very experimental image that's not installable. It's currently only able to be used as a live ISO. I did try and boot the live ISO in a virtual machine and it wasn't having none of it. So I've dusted out the old capture card and we are running it off USB on my main computer. So before we try and open things, I've already tried this once and we've got some major crashes, but I'm going to try and give you just a little overview of what the desktop's like and hopefully we don't experience any crashes while I'm trying to do that. So if you've not followed the news, um, Ubuntu back in the day, obviously you had Unity as its main desktop, and then it was going to move over to Unity 8, and it was the whole convergent desktop that was going to work across mobile phone platforms and desktops, and it was going to tie everything together. For whatever reason, they dropped that and then started to sort of implement GNOME as their main desktop environment. These days, though, convergence is kind of a big deal at the moment. Everyone's trying to get that sort of one universal platform to work. And I think I'm, I'm kind of a little bit gutted that Ubuntu is not going to be the one to do it. So at the moment, I have a Pine phone that's running UB Touch, which, of course, has got Unity 8 on it, basically. So we're going to have a look around and just see how we go. So this is your top bar here and you have a little cog there. So if you press that. That will be the same as pulling down the notification bar on the UB Touch phone or Pine phone is what I've got it installed on. So in here we have the about device, we have Ubuntu help, we have a little toggle there for desktop mode. Like I said, it's a convergent desktop. We have the system settings, start screensaver, and then your login, logout, shutdown buttons. We also have the time and date here with a little calendar applet there as well as the clock and then a little quick toggle there for the time and date settings. Now battery wise we don't have any battery we're using a desktop computer so we won't see any information there and indicator network seems pretty bare. Now like you just saw that popped out from the left I do believe it was set to auto hide at first but it appears to be staying on the screen now. We have our application launcher and panel basically so it's the same sort of layout that you'd find in Unity 7. However, you don't quite have the same universal HUD. So in Unity 7, you can search and it will find any sort of file or document or whatever's on your computer. I don't think Unity 8 or now as it's called Lamori does the same thing. So as you can see here, it separates your applications by alphabetical order. And there appears to be quite a few little things installed there. So what have they actually got installed out of the box here? So fairly standard Unity stuff that you would find. So like Rhythm Box is your music player, Remina. We have Terminal. We're going to try and open the Terminal in the moment. I did try and do a quick dummy run before I started filming. And we was having trouble opening certain things. But I'm hoping a fresh reset might have breathed a bit of life into it. So let's try and open up a Terminal. Okay, we're getting a little loading wheel. It's spinning. I wonder if it's going to open. I managed to get it open once and I even got to be able to check that the networking is indeed working with an IP ADDR show. Can we move the window? We can indeed. Um, and it's the exact same terminal that you will find appear in UB ports on your touch phone, UB touch. Okay, that's um, having a bit of trouble there actually opening up the terminal. Let's see if we can get anything else open while it's doing that. Should we be brave and try and get the system settings open? So here's the system settings. Let's see if that will open as well. So we've got two things going now. While it's doing that, let's show you the alt tab switcher now. Look at that. So it's a full screen sort of alt tab switcher. Quite a nice pretty little alt tabber. Right, so it's having a bit of trouble opening either of these programs. So what, what I think I'm going to do is do a hard reset. So I'm going to pause the video now and then we're going to get back into it and we're going to try and open up one of these programs. Right, we're going to try the terminal. There we go. So it's the exact same terminal you will find on UB ports on your touch phone. So let's show you now that the um, networking is working. As you can see, we have an IP address there at 192.168.0.46. So networking is working. We're even going to try and ping Google. Let's do c3google.com. So that's going to run it three times and then cancel it. Yep, networking is actually working. That's pretty cool. So now we're going to really risk it and see if we can open the system settings here. Yes, there we go. Right, so here is the system settings and of course... It's going to be a strange little size because it's the same that you will find on the phone. So it's very convergent. As you can see, when we did that, that then exposed a larger thing there in the about section. And as you can see, storage wise, we've got a 16.8 gig free on this USB. And that's pretty cool. So let's have a little click around and see what we can really have a look at. 
So the reason why we're using the capture card as well, there is no display setting in here at the moment, at least I can't see, and I couldn't get a just a display settings to work whatsoever. But anyway, we're, we're doing all good. So we have no Wi-Fi installed, so we can't really check that. I wonder if we can change the background. Here we go, so here's the background switcher. Again, exactly what you would see on the phone. So let's try. Oh, you can even change the dash background and opacity. Let's try this one here and see if that will change our wallpaper. So there's a set button. Bang, so that worked pretty nice. There we go, so the wallpaper switch is working. And now we have some options for our launcher. Let's see if we can make that a bit smaller. Yep, that worked pretty nice. So at the moment we have it on always show, but of course you can have it auto hide and then just use your mouse to scroll over it. We're going to leave it as auto show. Okay, so here's your sound settings, message received, because of course when you're using a phone you'll get a text through and then it will give you a little notification sound. Very nice. Language and text, so what we can do here, we can get an on-screen keyboard. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay, that's not appearing. Okay, we won't worry about that. And here's your notification settings, so apps that notify with sound. We've got zero at the moment. That's all good. So we have printing there. We also have our mouse and touchpad settings. Time and date. I'm not even going to bother attempting to try and change that. I'm just happy that it's actually having a, it's letting us actually have a little look around here. And then you have your app permissions here. So camera, location, microphone. So let's go into the about section. And as you can see, it's Ubuntu. It's a based on 18.04. Let's go into software licenses and there's all your software licenses for the applications that are currently installed. And let's just have a look at that application switcher once more. We appear to have actually lost the window preview. It's not painted it properly, but that's fine. Ah, don't crash on me now. Ah, oh, it's back. Okay, good. <laughs> right, so we try and open a couple more things and we're going to wrap it up there. Like I said, this is all very experimental, so don't expect everything to work. Okay, let's just minimise that for now. <laughs> so that minimises to the bottom of the launcher as well, which is quite funny. Okay, so let's try and open something else. I did have trouble opening Nautilus. I might try it again in a moment. We'll see how we go. Let's see if we can open up the system monitor. So we're getting the little loading cog. No, we have crashed. Okay, to be fair though, we got a good little run out of it before it crashed for us. I'm actually really quite excited about this and seeing where this could go. I would probably jump back on Ubuntu base distros and use Unity 8 to be honest with you. I'm just a bit of a Unity fanboy overall. Right, I'm going to stop the recording and then we'll jump back into it once it's refreshed the desktop. And we are back. So it's remembered our wallpaper. Let's now try and open Nautilus. We're going to risk it. So where's not? Actually, what did we just try and open? System monitor. Let's try and open system monitor once more. No, that's crashed straight away. Right, I'm going to pause the video once more and then we'll um, we'll finish up with trying to look at a couple more things. But no, let me know in the comments what you think about sort of the potential of Lomori or Unity 8 as a desktop environment and whether once it's finalised if it's something that you would actually use. Okay, we're just booting back up now. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and open up Nautilus. I really want to see if we can open up Nautilus. I do believe it's Nautilus anyway. I'm pretty sure... Okay, it appears to be opening it up. Oh, you have the hardware enablement stack there as well, the HD, HWE. Okay, so we're back in business. Um, we don't have the indicator applets at the top right again, like the first time when we did it. I'm sure we can make it crash and then they'll appear in a moment. So let's open up Nautilus now and just do the good stuff and make it crash for us. So we're, oh, we're already crashed now, mouse movement has stopped working. So I'm going to give it a few seconds and it's going to refresh the desktop for us and hopefully those app indicators in the top right will reappear. Okay, it's starting back up. And our app indicators are back where they belong. Right, let's try and open up System Monitor and see if that will open because we all I'm going to give up trying to open up files because that just seems to be instant crash every time. So come on baby, let me get some System Monitor action. we got the cog. And we got a crash. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I already know that we can open up a terminal uh, maybe six or seven times out of ten. I'm going to see if we've got HTOP installed, and if we haven't, I'm going to very quickly install it on this live ISO. And we're just going to see what HTOP outputs and says to us while we're sort of having a little final look. Woo, we got a terminal open, baby. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if we've got HTOP installed out of the box. I doubt we do. We don't, so we're going to attempt to install it.
Okay, it appears to install it. Nice, let's open up HDOC. There you go, would you look at that. So I'm going to imagine that that's a relatively quite high for what it actually is because we can't, we won't be able to do a reboot with HDOC installed and get a fresh sort of RAM reading at a sort of proper reboot. But that's what we're using at the moment. 700 megabytes of RAM. That's all right though, to be fair. And CPU cores aren't behaving too crazy at the moment. But we're going to wrap the video up there because I think any further looking into it, it's just going to completely crash. I tell you what, Let's try and open up one more thing, shall we? So what else do we have? Let's see if we can open up the text editor. That shouldn't be too difficult, should it? So the text editor is gedit and it's crashed. Right, we're going to end the video there. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.